Okay, this is a, a test game where we're looking at old school tactical. This is the uh, first edition of the uh, East Front Volume 1. We're looking at the Brandenburgers um, scenario. Now, a couple of things to mention here. If you are going to get this, don't get the first edition, right? Because the first edition was changed for the second edition. There's a new set of counters, which I believe have only got better artwork on them. Well, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, there's also some extra scenarios in the sort of second edition, uh, particularly a couple of learning scenarios, because there are no learning scenarios in this. This first scenario assumes you know what you're doing. Which is fair enough, I don't particularly care because I'm just learning the game anyway. I'm not trying to win anything playing solo as well. So you're only beating yourself. Um, other things I'd note, the counters, now they've got a little bit of rounding on them, but they're not, they're probably not to taste the, of people who like rounded counters. And the only problem is if you try and clip them with a two millimeter clip, it does nothing. If you clip them with a three millimeter clip, it damages the counters. Um, let me show you some examples. Right now, this is just might be my clippers, but you can see here, uh, see these little white marks all around the edge of the counter. That's been caused by the clipper. So it clips nice, but it ruins the counters. If you try and clip them from the putting the back against the clipper rather than the front of the counter into the clipper, it, it cross clips, makes a mess of them, and ruins them. So I don't know whether a 2.5 millimeter clipper would work. Uh, it's just a word of warning for people who like to clip. Um, you're gonna, I would say, you're gonna have to get used to the slightly pointy counters, the corners of the counters. One thing I have noticed is, while playing, is these things. A great idea, these, you can effectively move once or, uh, and fire, or you can fire twice, but you can, you can only move once in, a, in a, uh, a turn. Now, these are great in the fact that you can mark them, so I can mark him as moved, and I could say, all right, he fired, etc. The only problem is they cover up the entire counter. Now, they would have been great if they were on much smaller counter stock. So it only covers a little bit of a counter. So what I've been doing, I've been using these things here, like my trusty cubes. So I'm saying green, I've moved. Well, let's show a better an example. Let's say green, I've moved. Uh, yellow, sorry, red means I've fired. And uh, yellow means I'm used. Okay. Now the reason I like these is because I can see at a glance, I don't need to see the art, that I know how strong this counter is. So I know this counter um, has got a, an attack factor of 3, defense factor of 4 and a range of 6. I don't have to, there's other people, I've watched them playing these games and they're constantly sort of going, sort of going, oh move the counter out of the way, put the counter back. Um, that's just a personal thing. I have noticed that these, um, this chart that I printed off looks really clever, but it's, it's too messy. What, what you need to do with this game is get a combination of a card which has the terrain feature, an example of the terrain feature, on the terrain chart with this. Now, I've actually eventually just gone to using the terrain chart as it is without the illustration uh, it's not a big issue but uh, it would have been nice if they'd done that anything else I can think uh, this is really really good having these tracks so you're not having to use all the tracks at the edge of the board that's really good um, this unit this thing the unit data chart I don't think it's that much use. Uh, the cards, 
you're not really going to use them that often to work. I think the cards are really important for these ones where you've got your uh, range and penetration charts on them. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. It's it's a personal thing again. Use your cards. Use that data sheet type thing. I've actually laminated it so it's uh, inventory on one side and armour on the other. It's whatever you want to do. Um... Anything else? No, that's really comments at the moment um, in terms of the components and playing. Now, the actual game itself, I'm really liking this. I like the rule. I like the simplistic rules. Uh, there's, there's enough chrome in there to make it a satisfying experience. I also find this thing with the impulses. You can see straight away using this impulses, impulse method of, you know, got one player having a uh, the chance to do something and the other player having the chance to do something, and you've got the ability to to put opportunity fire in while someone's doing movement. Um, you can see the strategies. It's starting to appear even after playing for a couple of hours. I also, f that's something I never felt with ASL. I always felt when I'm playing ASL, I was struggling, fighting with the rule book all the time, uh, looking things up and thinking, all right, and then f forgetting them an hour later. Whereas here, the rules are quite simplistic. Uh, they're simplistic, but they're detailed enough. Now, this is an old rule book. It's another thing. If you get the second edition, you get the updated 5.7 rule book. Um, it's got a lot of sort of contents thing here. It desperately needs an index, but uh, the uh, oh, the latest version of the manual has a proper, and I mean a proper index, which is da -da! It's one of the things I gets me really annoyed about war games not having a proper index. Uh, so I've got the uh, latest version on my tablet there, so I'm using that to find my way around anything. Uh, so I like it so far. Um, as they say, so far so good. Uh, one comment, uh, there, there are videos on, on the internet, well I say on the internet, on YouTube, that only one person has tried to do an introduction to the entire game and they've done two one hour videos. Uh, they're good, but it's sort of, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't cover things in a logical way as far as I'm concerned. But that's that's neither here nor there. And there are other people who've done loads of great play view videos, but because it's just a playthrough, you're not seeing all the rules, you're just seeing stuff as it crops up in their game. Now, I'm actually tempted to do some rules videos of my own. But I will say that if I do rules videos, they're for me to learn the game. They're not there as a definitive teaching tool. Because I've had, I've had some comments uh, on the on my videos where I go through the rules and people say, "Oh, you've got that wrong. You, you're doing you, you're doing more harm than good." So I'll just mention that if I do any rules videos, they're primarily for me, and I apologise if I make any mistakes, but. Uh, I, I'm certainly not intending them to be uh, a, a teaching tool for everybody else. Um, I don't know what to say really any more than this. That that I like I like the map boards and I like this way that you, everyone says, "Oh, you got this huge map board," but just cover it in rule books and cover it in play charts. You know, it's not as if this space isn't being used it's being used by by all the bits and pieces i've got all over it and i've, I've actually got 
more more bits over here. I've got the like the scenario information here, um, and I got a big tray of counters there. So yeah, I don't see an issue with it. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact size of it is. I think it's about three foot by two and a half feet or something like that. So it wouldn't require a huge table. And that's it. Thanks for watching.